It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz, and we are talking about the flavors of pure Michigan this week. And Michelle, who are we going to talk to next? We are talking with Mike Beck, who is the president of Uncle John Cider Mill in St. John, Michigan. Um, he is also the treasurer of a great event coming up, the Great Lakes Cider and Perry Festival, September 6th. So we will talk about that as well. Um, but first, welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you. Is this festival taking place at uh, Uncle John's? Yes, yep, right here in St. John's uh, uh, from 1 to 7 at, uh, in what we, uh, one of the extra barns that we have, and uh, we also get a little bit of a tent area and for the growing Michigan cideries, and um, I have it right here on property. So we can talk about the festival in a minute and kind of that growing cidery in, cider industry, um, but let's first just kind of, since it's at Uncle John Cider Mill, talk about the the location. It is a destination. It's one of my favorite places to get cider and donuts uh, this fall. Um, kind of talk about what folks can experience when they come visit you. Well, yeah, we're a you know we're a, a family friendly farm. Uh, we have uh, you know uh, of course cider and donuts and apples. Um, uh, in season anyway, and, uh, you know, the other things that, that families like to do on a day, we have a big gift shop, a big bakery, um, we have a, a winery that, and distillery where you can uh, try wines and spirits and ciders, um, and, uh, you know, wagon rides, train rides, we have, uh, inflatables, a little kid's playground, we have a nature walk, um, and then uh, if you check out our website, you can see that we have lots of different events planned for uh, September and October, be it a car show or a, a craft show or any other fall kind of festival. Yeah, you know, the the fall season for farms like yours used to be, um, you know, if you had a wagon ride, you were really doing something, something different and fun. Now it seems like uh, farms like yours are getting very innovative with all these different and fun things. Yes, yes. Uh, well, we we want to keep people entertained. We want you know if they're uh, you know, want to have a whole a whole farm experience, and uh, we try to adapt uh, some of our fun things we do for uh, um, uh, you know with the agriculture. Is like one thing we've made is an apple cannon where we take uh, uh, second and third grade apples, and uh, uh, you'll be have the opportunity to shoot them out of cannons this year, and um, and. Uh, a corn maze where we've actually mowed down a, a maze within the, a cornfield. So we try to adapt agriculture to entertainment, and maybe we call it agritainment or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, so we always try to do something to keep them entertained on a farm uh, uh, with a connection to the farm. So talk about the festival you have coming up. I know you guys have, and when we're talking about, well, I guess you can clarify, we're talking about um, hard cider for this Great Lakes Cider Fest. That's correct. Yes, uh, we call uh, in most or any other country uh, cider would be known as something fermented, hmm. and uh, juice is what uh, you know uh, the unfermented stuff is. Well, in America, we adapted uh, cider for the for the term for fresh cider or, for, or juice, and uh, it gets a little confusing. But yes, this is for fermented beverages, cider and perry. Perry would be uh, uh, made from pears. Uh, which is uh, an even rarer beverage in cider. Yeah, so are Perry, you know, is the Perry, not really juice, Perry, I guess, is, is that sweeter than, than the apple cider? It can be, um, mostly because uh, uh, if you took, uh, if you fermented both of them uh, right next to each other uh, to dryness where there's no sugar left, there would still be some sweetness to Perry because it contains sorbitol, and sorbitol is an unfermentable sugar, so it would naturally taste sweeter than uh, than apple. But uh, some you can also there's many styles to these ciders, and uh, many of them can be very sweet as well. Now you mentioned um, when you were talking about the uh, Great Lakes Cider and uh, Perry Festival that it sounds like you have spaces for other uh, cider uh, manufacturers. Did I understand that right? Well, yes. We're an international organization, so uh, we have ciders from all over the world, really. Uh, um, uh, You know, of course, Canada is included in our membership, but uh, we also get some uh, ciders that are are being imported from uh, other countries in here to to, uh, to sample. And, uh, of course, we're going to have a fantastic range of Michigan ciders, but we get ciders from uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, down in uh, 
uh, or up in the northeast, down in the southeast, uh, all the typical growing regions for apples, uh, there's cideries in and around there. Hmm. And uh, so we'll, you'll have some ciders that you would have a very rare opportunity to get a hold of unless you're doing some traveling. Hmm. And Mike, you know, I think one of the things, and you can maybe speak to this, is that cider tends to be, um, for people who maybe don't think they like craft beer or the heavier beers or that sort of thing, that cider is kind of a good first step into, um, you know, Michigan-produced spirits and 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 that sort of um, artisan spirit, if you will, here in the state. Oh, oh absolutely. It's, uh, well, you know, cider is probably the one beverage produced in Michigan besides uh, some of the grape wines that are from the soil of the land here. And so there's really... You know, the grape industry here is rather new, but the apple industry here in Michigan is is rather old and been around a long time. So um, there's no beverage that, has, that made in Michigan, really, that has a better connection to the land than cider. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's part of our heritage in Michigan, growing apples. And we used to be a big cider state before uh, Prohibition. Hmm. So uh, this should be our, our uh, state beverage because... Uh, hmm. We grow the best apples in the land, and that's uh, you know all the all the other growing regions are growing apples that are really meant to be put into pretty bowls. They look great, but they're typically and eh, not as much. They, they don't look as they don't taste as good as they look. It's kind of like buying a Corvette and getting a Chevette. Yeah. <laughs> so um, apples from Michigan tend to be much richer, much uh, much livelier fruit. Um, and that's why all the big processors exist in Michigan, the big Gerbers of the world, the Sara Lees, the Mott's, the Welch's. It's because we grow fruit that can stand up to the uh, rigors of, uh, of further processing. And uh, that's why Michigan fruit tastes so much better than the foods that we actually eat. Well, it'll be a, a good time to visit Uncle John's uh, Cider Mill. Now, your, your uh, festival is actually Saturday the 6th from 1 until 7 p.m. D- just a half a minute to go, but do you have music and things like that, or we is it will, all about the cider? Yes, we will have uh, some live entertainment uh, on the grounds. Um, I think two bands, uh, and I can't recall their, their names right now, but mm-hmm. we will have live entertainment and a great selection of ciders. And there's also, of course... Uh, we'll have some food vendors out in some other areas as well, and um, and all the stuff going, wagons and trains and things like that. Sounds good. Well, of course, uh, every day of the year, especially as we uh, approach fall, good time to visit uh, Uncle John's Cider Mill up there in St. John's. So if you'd like more information, you can uh, just stop by or go to this website to find out about the Great Lakes Cider and Perry Festival. You can go to Great Lakes Cider. I want to thank Mike Beck, president of Uncle John Cider Mill, for filling us in on that festival coming up on the 6th of September. You know, we've um, mostly gotten through the uh, summer festivals now. It's it's uh, it's county fair time all over the state, so you're going to see a lot of the county fairs uh, starting to uh, either just get going or just wrapping up right now. And if you'd like to find out information about a county fair that you might want to visit, just go to Michigan.org and check out the events listing. I was looking at over the other day, and I was shocked at all the county fairs that are all of a sudden happening. So check that out. The events listing is always a, a great place to start your trip planning as you're looking for maybe a, a quick getaway for a weekend or just a, a nice uh, uh, day away from the house and away from your uh, weekend responsibilities. It's a good opportunity to, to find out what's happening just by going to Michigan.org. Of course, we still have some of the uh, the warm weather uh, travel guides available, and if you'd like to order that, just go to Michigan.org. We'll send it to you for for free, absolutely free. Just uh, order yours very soon. Uh, we will be able to also offer you the Pure Michigan official fall travel guide. That's going to be available before you know it. So just uh, check out what's happening at Michigan.org and look at that uh, free magazine request uh, area, and you're going to be able to find that fall travel guide before you know it at Michigan.org. We're going to find out what's happening in the Brighton area. This whole farm-to-table movement is growing as we explore the flavors of pure Michigan that's coming up next right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at Michigan.org. Michigan.org.